very nearly about sailing at July 2022. There will actually be some DIY in this one because um, I decided that I wanted to try it. Oh, by the way, just in front of me, it's out of camera shot. I'll show you a shot of it. Lucy installed an owl to stop the birds sitting on here and pooing after she gave Serenity a really nice jet wash. But as you can see, um, the owl hasn't really been doing its job properly. So we need to, we need to figure out a new way of stopping that. So yeah, sorry, um, this, this month, I very nearly finished putting the rudder back on and together, but I'd made a bit of a problem uh, when, I, when I rebuilt the rudder, because I kind of rebuilt it and thought, you know what, there's no hurry putting this back on. And I, and I hadn't measured something, and I made something a little bit too long. Um, so unfortunately, the finishing off of it will be next month, because I do like to get a video out per month. So that's completely my fault that I did that. So not a huge amount this month, Thanks for not being so too critical about the fact that there was no content at all last month. But I do like to get a video out a month, and this is the July one. So anyway, let's get on with looking at the, uh, putting the rudder on, and, oh, the tiller, and getting the tiller sorted out. Okay. Right, so here's a job that really shouldn't be slowing me down, and that's putting the rudder back on. And the reason that I haven't done it yet is because I need to get some new bushes. Which are these things? There's only two. Um, there's that one which goes on the shoe and there's one which would have been perfectly serviceable except for the fact that I broke it and it came off which goes at the top. Now the trouble with this one, I don't know if you can see that, is there are great big lumps cut out of it. I'm guessing that that's kind of if some grit or something got in there and then it turned and got stuck or barnacle, I don't know, something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble the rudder and I've made an HDPE washer. I know that HDPE does not stick to epoxy. So I'm going to assemble the rudder, put a layer of thickened epoxy in there, let it settle on there and then I know I shall have a lovely flat surface at the bottom of the rudder. I shall do something similar at the top, but that's not quite so critical. By the way, I didn't video me making that because I thought, oh, that's going to be trivial. That took ages because, of course, as soon as you start to cut HDPE, it, it melts. So I've had to cut it. It's a really tight fit around the shaft, which is great. I had to sand that a little bit. And this will basically be thrown away afterwards. Well, I won't throw it away. I'll save it to see if I can use it for something else. But um, that's the theory. Um, now let's see if it works. Right, so I've tipped the rudder on its side. Hopefully you can understand this. That, this is the bottom of the rudder and this is the bit that goes into that bottom bush. And as you can see, actually I'll change the camera angle a little bit. As you can see, there's a big gap between here and there. Actually, it's worse than it was before I cut this down. It was reasonably flat, but I've kind of cut it back and deliberately made it a little bit uh, less than flat so that everything has a better chance of sort of sticking together, not that I've got any doubt. So what I'm going to do is put epoxy in here, put that on, put that on and then actually fit it to the boat so that when I take this all off, there's a nice flat piece here. In fact, what I'll do is I'll fit it all up to the boat, uh, sort of lift the rudder up a little bit, squidge epoxy in and then push it down because I don't want to have epoxy drying on, if I do it tomorrow, it's supposedly the hottest day that we've ever had in the United Kingdom, um, and then squish that down. And then I will have a nice flat surface so that when I get a new one of these made, it will fit there and everything will be quite nice. I'll probably build it out from the edges a little bit. It's, uh, there's a little bit of a gap around there, so I've, I've deliberately made it go back a little bit further. Um, so there, not a desperately difficult job, but one that I've just been putting off. And I'd quite like to see Serenity with her rudder back on, to be, to be honest. So there we go. Right, so <coughs> officially that's a fail because there's about, I can't get the shoe up high enough by about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch five millimeters that new washer thing is too thick firstly i didn't need to oh, i didn't need to put this one up here because there is actually a bush a bronze something bush at the top that will hold it straight so i can take that out 
make another one of these uh, HDP bushes out of something thinner and that should do it. So in principle it will work but in practice it didn't work. <laughs> How often does that happen eh? Right so that was really just a miscalculation on my part because that is that's the HDPE washer that I made and that's as it, I did remember that there was quite a, a sort of a, a gap but in my head it was kind of about that I was only just looking it out so what I need to do somehow is um, find some really thin HDPE uh, that needs to be about half that size really. oh hang on a second Sorry, it's windy out here and I'm just about to go and do some recycling and, the, and this blew away. This is a, just a milk bottle which, um, actually that's made out of HDP and that's really thin. So it's, it's kind of that sort of stuff that I need to do. So I'll do an internet search and see if I can find some. Okay. Right, unfortunately that cut from the milk bottle was probably a little bit too thin, but I found an old cutting board and That's, that's about right. Although I probably will use this as well because I'm not 100% sure this is HDPE. I think it is. I know HDPE doesn't stick, but um, right. So I'll, I'll just sort of sandwich that in there just as a sort of a non, extra non-stick layer. <laughs> right, back to where we were a few days ago. Right, so here's the thing. I did remember correctly that there was a reasonable size gap, but of course, this bit that actually goes around the stock, I re I've refabricated that completely. And what I've done is I've made it a bit too long, and I think I've made it a little bit too long at the top. So this is squished right up here, and that's the old um, bush in there, and that's squished right up so that it's pretty much exactly tight. In fact, it's just slightly too tight that I can't actually put the screws in. So I'm going to have to take this off. I'm going to cut this bit down a little bit because I think that's where I've actually gone too too big it'll only need a quarter of an inch or something like that which is not too bad a bit silly of me I should have measured it more carefully but because I think what happened because I thought there was plenty of room um, I thought oh it doesn't matter if it's a little bit longer I'd like it to be a little bit tightened up anyway and obviously those little bits and little bits have gone too big so look I've got a safety rope on there I've got the jack on it's all it's actually very easy to work on the way I've got it set up now all right so this is about the amount that i need to cut off and one of the issues is you see this when the when this kind of hits against there it, it hits in the middle on that slopey bit and it's sort of held quite a bit further off so again it was just me stupidly mismeasuring it so i'm going to just get the angle grinder and a few bits and pieces and chop that off and then have another go right so there we are i've cut that substantially so it is, is a lot flatter and it it's down to that line there so that's a good eighth of an inch if I if I do this too much actually I can always build this up afterwards I can always put some extra stuff to to build that up and I'll flatten that off a little bit but that was that was just bad measurement oh and by the way the other thing I did Just for good measure, as I sort of flattened this off a little bit, just so that wasn't sticking out too much. So it's still, it's still rough, so the epoxy will stick. But I just, I just cut sort of an eighth of an inch or so on off there, and something I maybe should have done before. So right, let's let's get all this mounted up again and have another go. Right, I'll show you close up in a minute. But basically, that's perfect. There's a nice gap at the top there and at the bottom. So I can easily lift this up a bit, put the epoxy in, lower it down, get a nice flat surface there. And this is the first time that the rudder has been actually on properly. With the old bushes, you know what, that would work. That would be absolutely fine. It <laughs> I can turn a bit sharper to um, port than I can to starboard, but only by a tiny bit. But I'm very pleased with the way that looks, the way that it turns. Um, I'll show you this again, but it's a little bit slack down there, so when I do get the bearing, it's not going to be tighter in the stock, it's definitely going to be tighter in the, in the boot a little bit, because that is shaking around a bit, but yeah. So sorry, run out of time this month. The next month I'll show you the epoxy and getting it fitted up properly. So hopefully you can see this, that there's a bit more of a gap there, that's, that's more how I remember it. 
um, and this uh, bush at the top is fitting well. I'll, I'll sort of finesse this a little bit, make it an awful lot nicer, and then I can build it up so there is there is sort of a less of a gap. But um, very pleased at the way that works. Let me show you the bottom bit. Right, this is obviously the old <coughs> bush which is getting replaced. But if I move this, I don't know if you can see that, but there is there is a bit of play there on this. Not much, but I want it to be a good fit without being too loose. And I think it's just a little bit too loose at the moment. So, um, but that's you know that's what happens after 50 years. Things do wear out a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> After 60 plus years, things wear out an even lot more, which is me. So, yeah, very pleased about that. Finish that off next month. That's um, all the screw holes lined up perfectly. It's fitting back very nicely. And, um, yeah, it's good to have the proper rudder there. Oh, and the tiller stock. Yeah, let's have a look at the... Sorry, not the tiller stock, the actual tiller. Done that as well. All right, another important task. And I've started to do this by hand, but I'm going to do it with the random orbital, orbital sander is the tiller, um, which I think I'm going to do three or four coats of epoxy and then I'm going to coat it in the normal single part um, varnish simply because I preferred it when I was doing the washboards and I can put 10, 20, however many millions of coats on it and it, and it doesn't really matter. Um, it was lovely and shiny before except it had worn down at certain bits so I'm going to take it right the way back and get it nice and shiny again. Right, so that's the first initial sanding and that's, that's coming up very nice actually. There's lots of places where there's been holes drilled at various points. Um, so I'm going to drill these out a little bit, epoxy them, put some four or five, is it, stuff that's basically walnut powder, because there really should only be an attachment for the Sea Feather wind vane and an attachment for the ST2000. So I'm going to finish, finish doing that, then three or four coats of epoxy, and then loads and loads and loads and loads of coats of varnish. I won't bore you with any of that, I'll show you this when it's completed. Right, so here's the finished article. I don't know how well you can see that. It is nice and shiny. Um, I filled in any of the holes for the fittings that aren't going back in. Um, now I can't remember because it's quite a while since I did the epoxy. So it's had between three and five coats of clear epoxy, which obviously isn't UV resistant. And then I've got seven coats of compass varnish on top of that. And that should be fine and as soon as it's done probably once a year i'll put an extra coat on um i wanted this month to show the tiller going back on and the rudder going back on i actually can't find the fitments which which attach this and i can't find the fitments for the self-steering uh the wind vane self-steering and the um the tiller pilot so um they are somewhere back there perhaps i need to pay lucy some chocolate to do that but yeah i'm happy with the way that's turned out and in the not too distant future, should we have a dramatic flood, Serenity could actually go back in the water and move around as a motorboat. Not that I'm gonna do that, but anyway. Yeah, there we go. That's a very small job, but very happy to have done that. That's gonna be nice just to, she's gonna feel like a proper boat again when I get that back on. So there we go, I'm gonna call that a success. Um, I, what I'm doing is I'm experimenting with my energy levels now to do very short sort of 10 minute chunks spread out throughout the day to see if that's a more effective way of, of doing things than a sort of a 20 minute or something and then collapsing. Um, still early days on that. Um, I might give you an update at some point in the future. I, I can see the horizon now, which is good. I mean, the horizon happens to be a very, very long way away and I'm moving towards it very, very slowly. I'm talking about my health, by the way, not getting the boat back in the water. Um, but that's all good news. So anyway, enough of me warbling. Um, have a good month. Uh, get the get the rudder sorted out, and who knows what next month will bring. Let's see. See you then. Have a good one. Bye.